Your enemies can become tough cookies in Diablo 4's endgame. Not only will they hit like a truck, but they will also become a lot beefier. This will make Nightmare and Torment difficulty a true pain without the right gear, but in today's video, I'll help you make them a lot easier. Hey, what's up guys? It's your Matt Foria. I'm again back with a new guide for Diablo 4, in which I'm gonna give you five essential tips how you can dramatically boost not only your damage output, but also your survivability. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, so the first way how you can dramatically boost your damage output as well as survivability is to have the right gems equipped on your gear. There are many different gems you can choose from, amethysts, emeralds, rubies, and some of them can be pretty interesting in certain situations, while the most important one for more damage would be the sapphires, as these can increase your critical strike damage against crowd-controlled enemies. Damage versus crowd control covers a lot of different things. It's a huge list, so I'm quite certain that something on it will be inside your build. So it's very important to focus on as many sapphire gems of the highest tier in all your weapon slots. Two for the two-handers, one for the one-handers. To increase your survivability, you also want to focus on certain gems for your armor and jewelry. For armor, I would definitely recommend rubies from most builds, as these basically increase your maximum HP. The more lives you have, of course, the more hits you can take, survive longer on the battlefield. It's also interesting to know that maximum HP can also boost other stats like Fortify. For my jewelry, I usually go with diamonds, as diamonds will give you resistance to all the different elements. Poison, lightning, fire, I mean, especially those explosions on the battlefield can be very annoying inside dungeons. If you don't have a lot of armor though, I can also recommend you to go with skills, as the royal skill on higher levels will have plus 250 armor. It reduces your physical damage taken from enemies on my level by 55%, while non-physical damage taken is also reduced according to your armor contribution. So armor can also be interesting in a sort of resistance. During your adventures, you will also come across many legendaries which you don't find interesting to use, while the aspects they come with are super important for added survivability and damage as well. So these are all my maximum roll aspects. I keep these in my bank for the end game. I definitely recommend you to do this. This aspect, I think, is available for all the different classes. You gain 0.5% increased armor for 4 seconds when you deal any form of damage. And this stacks up to 50%. So you basically get 50% more armor. So if you already have a nice base value, this can make you extremely tanky as well. On my temporary helmet, I've got a imprint which gives me a barrier every time when I damage elite. So I become a lot tankier when I fight the big boys. While you can also boost your damage with this, as this one gives me more damage output when I have a barrier active. And there are different ways how you can generate barriers in the game, so definitely things to focus on. Since I have the perfect roll inside my bank, let's quickly go over it. So allowed item types are one-handed weapons, two-handed gloves, amulets, and rings. If you put it on your amulet, you will increase the power by 50%, so it can become a lot more potent. While on two-handed weapons, the power increases by 100%. So very important to put the right aspects on the right pieces of gear, because this can make huge changes to your damage output as well as survivability. To see all these detailed stat rules, you want to enable the advanced tooltips. So you're going to go to options, gameplay, and enable these two options right here, because that will allow you to compare all the different items. If you hold shift, you will see all the percentages, which is going to be very important to maximize your build. Another way to dramatically boost your stats is to visit the blacksmith and upgrade your gear. I know many people probably already figured this out, but it's very important that you don't want to do this too much in the early game, as this is going to cost you a lot of precious resources. This is just a standard yellow item, which I saved, nothing too fancy, but you can see that the critical strike damage is just 29%. If we upgrade it, we will go up by 2.9%. But see what happens if we upgrade it four times. So right now it has 40% critical strike damage, so almost a double amount of what it had before. If you're still leveling up, I recommend you to only upgrade four times because these levels are pretty affordable, while the fifth level is quite expensive, so I only recommend you to do this when the leveling starts to become slow and you found an absolute god to your role. It's also important that for the final level, you're gonna need Forgotten Souls, and these can only be found inside Helltides. Already made a guide for it, which you can find at the top right of the screen if you wanna farm these as efficiently as possible. Same counts, by the way, for the Fiend Roses. But there 
there is another way how you can quickly boost your stats. So right here, we've got a standard item, a plus two ranks hammer of the ancients, but also a plus two ranks of rent. I happen to have rent in my build. So my rent deals 1,500 to 1,800 damage. If we equip these gloves though, we can crank up this damage big time. And even though the other stats of the gloves are pretty bad and are probably taking down my average value, right now my rent deals 1,700 to almost 2,100 damage. So it's very important to focus on these extra upgrades to maximize the power of your abilities. I can't take any points out of this because this all comes from my armor. Well, if we quickly look at my charge, this one has a 10 seconds cooldown right now, but deals a lot of damage as well. So I can one shot elites against the wall, very satisfying barbarian build. But this is of course because of all the contribution which I have on my armor. So my chest has plus four ranks on ground stomp. My leggings have plus four ranks of charge. On my necklace, I have ranks of heavy handed passive, which is also a pretty interesting one. So depending on the build you roll with, either offensively or defensively, if you rank up your skills with your armor, these can become a lot more powerful. I've got one more tip for you guys, and this is probably the one with the biggest impact. It made my character so much more powerful and it can be easily overlooked. Let me quickly put my camera right here. So we've got a two handed sword, plus 109.5 basic skill damage. For my specific build, we heavily focus on core damage and basic skill damage. So this is gonna be an awesome role to have, while plus strength is gonna be something decent, plus damage to close enemies. This is also a very important one, as with my build, Barbarian, we always are in close melee range. So this basically, if we have the perfect roll, increases our damage output by 70.5% damage. If you can put this on two two-handers, that's plus 140% increased damage. We also have the basic skills gained from the aspect, but um, if we quickly look at my mace right here, this one isn't fantastic, I'm still looking for an upgrade, but it has increased critical strike damage. You can see that this skills lower than something else all stats but also plus damage to slowed enemies also up to 70.5 percent this ability hamstring your bleeding effects slow enemies by 10 percent i always apply bleed to my enemies so with my weapons we will deal so much more damage if we focus on specific boosts on this one-handed weapon, I have a perfect roll, damage to bleeding, plus 19.6%. So you would say this is really nice as my build does involve a little bit of bleeding. But on my other one-handed right here, we have a roll which can go up to almost 33% increased damage against close enemies. So damage to close enemies scales much higher in comparison with the bleed. If we quickly throw it in the enchantment right here, we can see that every time when we enchant it, ooh, we just went from um, 77 strength to 84 so that's a good one but also increased basic skill damage i tried my luck a couple more times but unfortunately we ran out of money but that is basically how you can get the best out of your character maximize your damage output as well as survivability in diablo 4 ladies and gentlemen a big thanks for watching be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe as there is a lot more coming your way right now though it's 4am out i want to wish you an awesome day i'll see you in the next one peace